Lately, there have been a lot of videos about snail games and wildcard, and it seems there is a lot of confusion about how the two companies are related. Is wildcard snail games? Is snail games just a publisher? And wildcard should get away from them? What exactly is going on here? The whole wildcard versus snail games has left many confused as to what is going on, and others asking, why is wildcard not getting out of this relationship with snail games? To understand what is happening, we must first understand the relationships Snail Games and Wildcard have. Through this, we'll go over the three main relationships that game developers usually have. Okay, the first one is a publisher relationship, which would be a contract, usually for a specific game or a specific amount of time. During this period, the agreed upon games would get sent to the publisher where the publisher would then quality test the games and send them back to the development team to fix any issues found. Rinse and repeat until the game met the publisher's standards. The publisher would then sell the game and market the game under their name. The publisher is also allowed some input, depending on the contract, into certain aspects of the game's development. But that's more complicated and we can dive into that in another video. Usually, a publishing deal comes with X amount of funding, for the development company from the publisher. Once a game launches, the publisher gets 100% of the profits until the money is made back that they lent to the game developers. After being paid back, the publisher then usually keeps 20 to 40% of all future profits from the game. Unless the development company got a bad deal, the publisher is usually only for one game, and a new agreement will be made for other games. So, if a company made an RPG, and got a publisher for it, released it, then made a first person shooter, but chose to sell the FPS themselves, the publisher would have no say over the FPS and get no money from it. That is the simplest way to explain the publisher developer relationship. Legal contracts and so on can make it more complicated, but that's the basics. In a publisher developer relationship, if the developer ends up not liking their publisher, they don't have to work with a publisher on future games. They may even be able to get the rights to the game the publisher published for them back, as we saw with Bungie and Activision. Another type of relationship developers may have with publishers is called a subsidiary. This is where a publisher or company comes in and buys at least 51% of a game development company. When this happens, that game development company is now owned by the publisher or company. In this situation, the game development company can retain its name and operate as what seems to be a standalone company. The company that bought them though, called the holding company, has all of the power and final say. Usually, the management and or board of directors structure from the game development company will remain intact. But there is a catch. The holding company can remove and replace anyone in the management or on the board that they want if the holding company is not happy with their subsidiary. Essentially meaning the subsidiary has to do what the holding company wants. A subsidiary is nothing more than a smokescreen to keep the majority from knowing who actually owns the game. Profits go to the holding company, depending on how much of the subsidiary the holding company owns, but let's not get into the complicated aspects of that for this. Then there is the third option, which is to self-publish. The game development company markets and publishes their own game, reaping all the benefits, but also taking on all the risks. I'm currently working on a video that should come out shortly about why Wildcard is releasing ASA now and why they are charging for it. Make sure to subscribe to get notified of future videos. So, can Wildcard just make a new game and move away from snow games? Let us know in the comments below if you think or thought Wildcard was a self-published company, had a publisher, or was owned by another company. Okay, so can Wildcard just make a new game and move away from Snail Games? Could they wait for a contract to expire and get the rights to ARC away from Snail Games? What exactly is Wildcard to Snail Games? Alright, let's dive into it. In 2015, Wildcard was sued by Trinity Games for a non-compete clause. During this lawsuit, it came out that Snail Games was the holding company of Wildcard, making Wildcard a subsidiary. Some say the lawsuit is what forced Wildcard into selling. Others think the lawsuit came about because Trinity found out Wildcard had sold itself to Snell Games. Either way, doesn't matter. The end result is the same. 
Wildcard is Snail Games. While this was a move made by the owners to reach the Chinese market, was it the best choice? It is hard to say, since I do not know where the majority of ARK's profitable sales come from. But theoretically, the Chinese market should have performed better and made more money for this style of game. Will Wildcard try to free themselves of Snail Games? Well, well, that's hard to say. A move like that could cost them the Chinese market. Snail Games may also require more than is feasible for Wildcard to purchase their company back. So without any feedback from Wildcard on the subject, we should just assume that they are not splitting from Snail Games, at least not until after ARK 2 is done. So buckle in for at least another 5 years of this relationship. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.